Hi, I'm Elise. And I'm Reese. And we're from Sydney, Australia. And this is the story of how we made our baby. We got together in 2011, so we've been together for eight and a half years. And when we met, I was getting quite sick. And by August 2012, I had a double lung transplant because I have cystic fibrosis. Elise was strongly cautioned that it would be quite dangerous for her to carry the pregnancy. Yeah. The possibility was that both of us wouldn't survive the pregnancy, or that one of us would. But yeah, it's pretty dangerous. So after much consideration, we decided that we still wanted to have a child, and that there were um, other ways to do that, yeah. which in our instance, um, we decided would be that uh, we would create embryos of our own and then we would look for a surrogate and look for some remarkable person to, uh, to carry our baby yeah, carry our baby <laughs> um, yeah we were really fortunate that we were able to make embryos together um, and we ended up with nine beautiful healthy embryos and they went into the freezer awaiting the next step. When we started looking for a surrogate in 2017, um, we didn't really know how to go about doing that. So we just started by telling people we knew and, um, and kind of putting the word out, I suppose, that this is what we were hoping to do. And um, People were very supportive, friends and family were really supportive and kind of, you know, offered us lots of encouragement, but um, sort of no one in our circles really was in a position to do it. Early 2018, uh, we started talking to the fertility clinic again about um, information regarding surrogacy, and they actually pointed us in the direction of Canada. Um, because the Australian and Canada surrogacy laws are very similar and they were encouraging that uh, rather than a commercial surrogacy arrangement. Um, so I was talking about Canada to a friend of mine and she said that her sister-in-law lived in Canada and she actually worked in the birth industry and that she might be helpful and have some information about surrogacy. Hi, I'm Kendall and I am the gestational carrier that helped Elise and Reese make their family. Um, in the spring of 2018, my sister-in-law from Australia had reached out to me and asked me if it was okay if she could give my information to uh, two of her friends who were needing a surrogate to start their family. I'm a doula um, in the local birth community, so I have access to a lot of different networks that they wouldn't have had access to just being non-birthy people. <laughs> um, so I got an email from Elise in April just kind of sharing the gist of their story, um, where they were at in their journey. Um, I believe at that time they were um, in contact with an agency at the time. Um, and from there we kind of talked a bit on email and then we scheduled in a Skype call um, and I had expressed that surrogacy kind of always was in the back of my mind but it wasn't ever anything that I was going to actively pursue through an agency. I just kind of thought if it fell into my lap um, it would and then I met Elise and Reese. So when, when we met Kendall on Skype, we were we we felt that really strong connection with her. And then when we met Dave, we were like, these guys are such an amazing couple. Um, and we sort of built this relationship 
over the course of a few months. Once we decided to go, yeah, there was a lot of like yeah, that needed all, to happen. <laughs> yes, there was a lot of paperwork yeah. on our end, and um, which wasn't really our thing. <laughs> it was kind of an annoying thing to have to do. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and then um, we shipped out all of our embryos over here uh, because they weren't allowed to be split up. Um, and then after that, things kind of moved really fast. I went on a couple of different medications. Um, we did the transfer in December of 2018. I had gotten some pregnancy tests and I had asked you guys if it was okay if I took a pregnancy test and if I did, would they want to know the results yeah. on Christmas Day. Um, so I okay. took a digital test yeah. and it came back like very positive. Yeah. I think Reese had woken up early before me and he'd seen it and then he came in and went to the look at this and then when I looked at the video of the pregnancy test I just started crying I couldn't I was so happy yeah, We had originally planned to have a home birth and then that didn't happen <laughs> um, Everything was going great in the pregnancy and uh, then around our 20 week ultrasound, we found out that I had a condition um, called vasopremia, uh, which um, essentially at that time was going to potentially risk us out of having a home birth um, and potentially uh, needing to have a cesarean. I think it was around 28 weeks, uh, it became very clear that, uh, that this baby was needing to be born via a scheduled cesarean. Um, you know, it, at the time I was, it was a lot to take in and I did have a couple of days where I was a bit sad about, you know, grieving that kind of birth process probably for you guys too, like the change in plans. Um, but it actually was nice in the end um, to have a day to plan, um, you know, his birth <laughs> to plan. <laughs> and I checked myself in to the hospital. 34 weeks. Um, Elise and Reese had arrived a week before I went into hospital. So we had um, been expecting for me to be in hospital for three weeks uh, with uh, the baby being born at uh, 37 weeks, which would have been in August. We're staying with Kendall and Dave at their place, and um, the night that Kendall thought her water may have broken, uh, we had just rested our heads on our pillows when Dave came into the room and in his quietest voice said, I think Kendall's water might have broken and we should get to the hospital. And um, it was a bit of a shock because we, we weren't expecting it at all. We weren't expecting Tiny T to come so early. Um, but we. Uh, got our stuff together and, and drove into the hospital in record time. Once it was confirmed that your water had broken, uh, it was, you had to come out that night. Yeah, things moved pretty fast um, yeah. from my standpoint. I wasn't sure if Elise and Reese were going to make it. I wasn't sure if I was going to be put under general anesthetic. Um, but because Tiny T was stable and his heart sounded good and there was no bleeding, um, we were able to um, yeah, basically delay it, delay it enough bit. for them to arrive for the birth. And he, and he came out crying and he was just the most beautiful little thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> he was, yeah. And it was really beautiful for me um, because I was awake and not in the throes of labor um, that I was able to actually like watch them stand up and see him, which was really yeah. beautiful. Yeah, and then uh, we realized he was having some trouble breathing. Yeah. And, um, which was quite a shock. But uh, then we ended up in the NICU for a little stay. Yeah. The room in the hospital had a bed, so we fold my bed, so we kind of just basically set up camp in his room for a week. And, um, and just tried to spend as much time with him as we could. Tubes and you know breathing stuff.
stuff and the wires um, all removed. All removed one by one. And after a week, he was discharged and we were able to bring him home. Mm -hmm. Well, to our home in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> so we, when we, we came to Canada for the birth and we thought we had decided on a name. And once he came out into the world and we saw him, uh, we realised it probably wasn't Didn't the right him. name. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we took a bit longer and I think we settled on a name um, sometime in the first like 24 hours yeah. after he'd been moved up into the NICU um, ward and we were kind of sleep deprived and you know, mm. unable to sleep from the stress of it all. Um, and Elise proposed the name Franklin, which I was 100% in for, so we named him Franklin. Middle name, we decided um, in a tribute to Kendall and Dave and their family, um, we would take their family surname Marshall and that to him as his middle name. So he's Franklin Marshall. Yeah. <laughs> what I realized after the birth was that was kind of just the beginning. Like, we had gone through all of this stuff like to get to the place we were at with Frankie. But like after he was born, and because you've never been through something like that, you don't know how it's gonna like impact you or you know the importance of it all. But it became clear after he was born that it was kind of the beginning, I think, for just like an extra arm of family. <laughs> yeah, like a lot of love and respect. And, yeah, yeah. It was kind of just like Frankie was born, and so she <laughs> yeah, yeah, like it that is. was like in a way like a. A different kind of family is born through surrogacy. Yeah, I don't know, we just feel so fortunate that like we, we had this idea for what we hoped it would be like and we've really just It's been so much better than that. Yeah, yeah. it's been the best like, possible version. Yeah. Yeah. Our expectations. yeah, me too. I feel like it just was so beautiful. It was like I'm so glad I did it. Yeah. <laughs>